you all know that um, <clears throat> I always say that salvation is good. Getting saved is one of the most important decisions that you will ever make in your life. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop at salvation. Yes, you're saved and you're on your way to heaven. But what happens if after you get saved, you live another 40, 50, 60 years? God doesn't just want to save your life. He wants to lead your life. And because of sin, certain things are going to happen in this life that we're going to have to learn to live with. Things that we do to ourselves, things that other people do to us. But because you are alive, you need to learn how to live and deal with circumstances and situations that you may face after salvation. And God wants us to live that the best way possible. There are things that he has put in his word, principles that he wants us to live by, that will teach us how to go through life living in a sinful world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, the world has a way to handle life. But God has what you always hear me say, a better way. And I'm constantly trying to preach and teach and push you in the ways that will help us to live God's best. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because at the end of the day, we have to realize this is Satan's realm. And he has a way of doing things here. And a lot of people who don't know God go through life, living life and handling their life and situations a certain way. But I'm here, and I feel as if God has put a, a, man, a mantle on my life to teach us to live it his way. And we will get through in a better position. Because at the end of the day, we ain't going to miss stuff. And stuff ain't going to miss us. We're not always going to handle stuff the right way. And people ain't always going to treat us the way we want to be treated. But in order to enjoy the blessings of the day, there are certain ways that he is teaching us how to live to get through these types of situations. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm constantly trying to encourage you. To learn to live God's best. And that is by reading his word. I'm starting and I want to lay, um, lay a foundation today on a series that I want to start called Jesus Take the Wheel. Yeah, but if you drive yourself into a ditch, that ain't his fault. I'm just saying. Huh? <laughs> I said, yeah, Jesus take the will, but if you drive yourself into a ditch, that's not his fault. <laughs> right. And that is why we are trying to see prevention is better than kill. That is why we're here now. He, he wants to teach you how to drive so you don't drive in a ditch. When you don't listen to him, then that's where you end. Yep. I'm here to say, God is speaking and saying, do it my way and you won't end up in that ditch. Right. Amen? Amen. Now, if you all see the picture I put on the front of the bulletins. Yeah. <laughs> Life has many roads. And as you can see, the roads ain't empty. There's plenty cars on the roads. Amen? Amen? Now, even if, because those of us that are reading God's word, I don't want you to believe for one minute that we don't have struggles. It's hard enough when we follow God's word, much less when we don't. 
Because following God's word, you still got to deal with self. You still have to make decisions. That's why the Bible says we need to die to self daily. How, how often? Daily. And for some of us, it got to be hourly. Amen. Because <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. you got some people, they will try you. Amen? Amen. Now, like I said, I don't think we'll ever be perfect at it. Because life is a process, and we will always be learning and growing. But I think as we grow in his word, we get better. You understand what I'm saying? That we get better. So, I do believe that learning his way is better for us. And God speaks to us through his word, and he wants to lead us. <laughs> I firmly believe that if we don't read God's word and find out the ways he wants to lead us, we won't actually know where to look for his leadership. Everybody knows who have a phone or a computer, that they got these places called Facebook, TikTok, and a bunch of others. And there are millions of people on there giving advice. Am I right or wrong? A dime a dozen. And people following that advice. And you've heard me say before, it, it, it amuses me. Someone go in their bathroom, sit on the toilet, and say, don't do this. And then you follow it and make a life decision and do that. <laughs> you laugh. You'll be surprised to know where they're sitting when they're writing these things. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And a lot of times, you got to understand, the, the stuff that they're writing, it don't sound bad. It sounds good. It sounds like it could be right. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But God wants us to follow His word because it's His best. I always say, is there another way? Yeah, you can listen to them people on them things. But if you want to go through life the best way he thinks you should go through life. Because at the end of the day, he is the creator. Amen. And he knows what's best for his creation. Then his way is the best way. I do believe that after salvation, God wants us to grow in the knowledge of him. And learn how to live which is important, with each other. Amen? Amen? It's important. Because for his purpose to be fulfilled in our lives, we are going to have to deal with people. God's purpose is always about people. Are you all hearing me? It's always about people. Reaching people. Letting people know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is, eter is, is eternal life. How to live his way. I want to start off by saying, making this statement. If I want God to protect me, I must be willing to let him direct me. Oh. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> If I want God to protect me, I must be willing to let him direct me. Because his, direct, his protection, most of the time, is tied up in his direction. Many of us can relate to this because we have human experiences that we understand this. There are people who won't take our advice on the front end, but then ask for our help on the back end. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They listen to you before they get the situation. But then when they get the situation, they want you to help them get out. Amen? Amen? There are people who won't take your advice. They ask for your <clears throat> protection because they didn't take your direction. You can't protect 
which you can't direct. <laughs> you can't insulate someone from adversity who keeps ignoring your advice. I'm going to say that again. You can't insulate someone from adversity who keeps ignoring your advice. And God looking at us, we won't take his word, but we stay falling in traps. And then we remember, oh God, mm -hmm. from the hole. <laughs> mm -hmm. What he was trying to do is stop you from falling in the hole. Right. But you wasn't hearing his voice when he was on top. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> and if people keep ignoring your direction, then they are jeopardizing. Your protection. And it'll go so long, and after a while, they won't bother trying to warn you. And you keep ignoring and ignoring and ignoring after a while. Well, it gets easier. Yeah. That still small voice that's convicting you and, and, and trying to tell you, don't do this, you stop hearing it. You get, it gets so easy to ignore it. You see how serious that is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is why God has a deep desire to do more than just save our life. He wants to lead our life. Not because it's in our, in his best interest, but because it's in our best interest. He wants to lead it because he knows things that we don't know. Amen? Amen? Amen. He sees what we don't see. He can predict what we can't predict. And he knows, and this is what Mary was just saying, if we lead it, we will end up someplace. <laughs> but if he leads it, we will end up in the right place. Are you all hearing me? He wants to take the wheel. He wants to take the wheel. David captured this perfectly in Psalms 23. When he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely, 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 not maybe, not possibly, but surely goodness and mercy will follow me. In other words, David says, if I follow him, I don't have to follow it. It will follow me. <laughs> you all get that? If I follow him, I don't have to follow it. It will follow me. If I chase after him, and you all hear me preachers all the time, seek the Lord, chase after the Lord, go after him. He got what we want. He got what we need. Amen? Amen. And he's saying, if I follow him, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. If I follow him, it will follow me. In this season, family, of our lives, we need a revelation of who and what to chase. Are you all hearing me? Hmm. 
We've chased the wrong things long enough. And now we should know what is worth chasing and what is worth leaving behind. The Bible is very clear. Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Is there anyone here this morning who is ready for goodness and mercy to chase after them? Mm -hmm. hmm? yes. Personally, I want goodness and mercy to be my stalker. Mm -hmm. Stalk me. <laughs> Are y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. I want it to come after me. I want it to chase me down. But there's a prerequisite. David says all these things can be our experience if the Lord is our shepherd. Do you all see that? The Lord got to be our shepherd. Verse 2 says, he makes me to lie down. That's David saying, he knows how to force the right pit stops. You know, sometimes we don't stop, 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 and he got to stop us. Mm -hmm. I can't do that right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? Because Amen. we could do, 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 do. And sometimes you got to stop and... <sighs> I thank God for Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Then it says, <clears throat> He lets me go, not to, but through the valley of the shadow of death without fear of evil. Why? Because he is with me. He says his rod and his staff, they comfort and protect me. Now the rod was a tall straight stick to fight off animals and the enemy. The staff had a curve end. And it had like a hook. That was for me. It was for me. See, when the sheep started straying away from the flock, the shepherd would use the staff and hook the sheep neck and pull the sheep back. <laughs> well, we ought to praise God and celebrate right there because there were times when we strayed away. There were times when we stepped out of bounds. And when we didn't have enough spiritual sense to come back to God, God hooked us and pulled us back. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Been out there, lost. Know what you're supposed to do, but didn't have that fortitude on the inside to just... Mm -hmm. And he had to hook you, pull you back. Create situations to make you turn around. Amen? Amen. Can anybody testify that there were seasons in our lives when God had to bring us back? There were times when God was sitting up there and saying, yeah, I know you was with them while they were doing it. But when you try to do it, I had to reel you back in. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. You know you shouldn't have been there. <laughs> but you was never comfortable there. <coughs> Thank God. Why? Because I put something different on the inside of you. I've anointed you. I've called you. I've chosen you. Yeah, they could do it and get away with it and go home and sleep. But when you do it, I can make you toss all night. <laughs> 
Any of you know what I'm talking about? Why? Because you got something different on the inside. That's right. And you fighting, and I can fight for you. I'm going to continue to make you uncomfortable till you come back home. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hmm. Yeah, let them sleep. You go here. Come here! <laughs> you mine. My mother used to say, yeah, he's giving you enough rope to hang yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you all hear that before? <laughs> yeah. yeah, let him go. Let him go. They can soon feel the tar. End of the rope. That's it. It's time to come back. <laughs> we laugh at these things, but it's the truth. And thank God that we still have that tugging. Because if you stop getting the tugging, <laughs> that's not a good place. That's not a good place. The tugging means God ain't give up on you yet. Amen. Amen? He ain't give up on you. Now notice David says, The Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is a shepherd. Because to be my shepherd means that I've made a decision to make him my shepherd, mine. To make him my shepherd means I've got to be willing to give up something that I want to keep. You know what is really weird in this world? And maturity brings you to a place to understand this. We fight to hold on to something that we really don't have. Listen to me now. He wants us to give up something that we're holding on to, but we really don't have it in the first place. Now we think we have it, and because we think we have it, it gives us a sense of peace. Because we think we are, we have it. Amen? Amen? So we're holding on to something, and because we think we have it, it gives us this peace. Because we think we're keeping it. It's keeping us. When the truth of the matter is, we have peace about an illusion. An illusion of possessing something we really don't even possess. And God is like, I need you to give this to me. Because you don't have it know-how. And the illusion is, we think we are in control. <laughs> We're not in control. We think we're in control. We like to think, you know, we like to say, oh, I'm in control. We like to say that. We ain't in control. We live and move and have our being because of what? Christ. Because of him. The alarm clock didn't wake us up this morning. He woke us up. Amen. Because there's plenty of people who are alarm clock ringing and they can't hear it. Dead. <laughs> that alarm clock couldn't shake them out of that. If God wants to give you and bless you at another day, he lets you open your eyes. Are you hearing me, family? He is sovereign. You're not in control. He's in control. Now, we have influence. You may have influence. You may contribute to an outcome. But you really can't determine the outcome. You're not in control. You don't have the final say. You can control filling out the application correctly. You cannot control whether or not the person who's making the decision regarding your application looks at it objectively. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. There's only so much we could do. Man made plans, but the Bible says the outcome is what? Always in God's 
hands. Hmm. See that picture? You could control that you stay on your side of the road, but you got control that they stay on their side. Right. All right or wrong? You see how we take these things for granted? And we jump on our guys and pull off like we so safe. <laughs> huh? And all some fool got to do is drink that devil water and start saying cross-eyed. <laughs> he don't even know when he cross over on your side of the street. And you doing everything right and he mash your car right up. Where was your control? You didn't have it. But we take these things for granted. That is why we ask God to, for traveling mercies to cover us. We don't know. You get up on an on, on a ordinary day and go to work, you don't know you're coming back home. That's right. <laughs> Parents, when I grow up in the home where your mom, mommy say, put on clean underwear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Make up your bed. You don't know how you're coming back home, and I don't want nobody walking here and think I don't make y'all clean the house and make up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. You don't know. We do take these things for granted. But we're not in control. And that's the illusion. And we want to hold on to that. Like it's all about us. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You can control how you say something, when you say something, and even if you pray before you say something. But you cannot control a person's past, their traumas, or their filter, or their interpretive lenses, which all determine how they receive <laughs> What you say. That is why you got to be careful what you put on paper or what you print or what you write down. Because you could write it down in one attitude and the person receive it in a whole different way. <laughs> Same words. You can't control that. You write a simple message. In three, four days, that person even speak to you, you got to say, well, what happened? <laughs> why are you... They got offended the second they read your text. It happens. We don't have control. So God is saying, give me what you think you have. So I can give you what you really need. You think you've been in control? I've been in control. You think you're alive because you're in control? No, no, no. That's me. And you got to realize God is saying, I've been blocking stuff and blessing you in ways you didn't even know. You've been praising me for what you know about. You ought to be praising me for what you don't know about. <laughs> the things I've been keeping from you. Keeping from stopping you. Clearing your path. The stuff I stopped before it even got to you. The doors I closed. The many times I suffocated. The plans of the enemy. The activities he had planned for you. And I snuffed it out. And you didn't even know. Because you're mine. And when you trust and obey. I will take care of you. Are you all hearing me? Yes. <laughs> we want a savior, but we need a shepherd. I need to give control over. Instead of me leading and asking him to bless what I'm doing, I need to ask him and say, Lord, what are you doing? Because whatever you're doing, it's already blessed. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I want you to know this morning, God wants to be our shepherd. And he's anticipating an opportunity to be our shepherd. He wants that opportunity to be our shepherd. We need him to be our shepherd. But it is one thing to know that we need him to lead us. It's another thing to know how he wants to do it. I won't know where to look for his leadership if I don't follow him. 
And if I don't know how to look for his leadership, where to look for his leadership, I will be looking for leadership in all the wrong places. I know everybody in this room know what it is to follow something that was wrong. Because when you started following that thing, you thought it was right. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have gone there. I read it wrong. Who knows something is wrong and then still follow it? Well, you got some idiots that do that. Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> but the majority of people, we don't know it up front that is wrong and then deliberately follow that. Amen? Amen. We don't do it. Many people look for leadership in the wrong places. It has been my experience as a pastor that many people who have gone through failures and missteps have actually blamed it on the Lord. What do I mean by that? Many people will say, well, God told me to do this. God told me to do that. God led me in this direction. And then they do the thing. They go in that direction, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So who they blame? They blame God. <laughs> it's not that they weren't trying to follow. They are trying to follow God. Because most of us have been taught, excuse me, God is the one to follow. The problem is, they just have not been taught how to follow. So many people are operating with the sin of presumption and the sin of assumption. And assuming they understand the ways he wants to lead. You can't assume that you understand the way God wants to lead. If you're not letting him tell you through his books. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let me tell you a huge problem that many people have. Many people, unfortunately are living on pass-down information. Are you all hearing me? Mm -hmm. And when you hear someone say, well, it was good for my grandmother, and it was good for my mother, and it was good. Okay, that's very, very good. You got to understand, a lot of those people did the best that they knew how. That doesn't necessarily mean they understood how everything went. I just told you, I just talked to you all the other day about my father. I loved the man to death. But he never once in his life ever hugged me. I wouldn't talk but put his lips on me and kiss me. Does that mean he was a bad person? No. But does that mean if I have a son, I shouldn't kiss my son? No. You can't live on past that information. Mm -hmm. Just because daddy didn't do it don't mean I shouldn't do it. Are y'all hearing me? And a lot of people live their lives on what used to happen before. And unfortunately, a lot of the start things is tradition. And some of it is cultural. In our culture, we do this. So since they've been doing it for the last 50 years, I think it's good enough for me to do now. Oh, well, y'all getting quiet now. This is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you stay crippled. I need a reader. John chapter 8, verse 31. I want to read verse 31 of verse 32. People are uh, staying crippled for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is, you know. It's not that it can be done. 
It's just that you don't know it could be done. And since you ain't looking in the place where you can find out where it could be done, you're staying stuck in the place where somebody told you. I'm making any sense? Absolutely. <laughs> Someone tell you, if you go at that door, you can die. And God is saying, if you go at that door, I will bless you with every desires of your heart. I will give you more than you can ask for or think. And that's what the word said. Mm -hmm. But because that person who you love say, well, my daddy tell me don't go. I ain't never been out there. So I don't think you should go out there. Because out there, it's death. If you stay in here, you live your life below where God wants you to be. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're living on past down information. And the book that will tell you the truth is right here in this place. Right here. But rather than open this, I listen to you. Who got John 8? <sighs> yes, Ken. Can you read it? The whole, uh, no. Verse 31 and 32. Listen to the words of the Bible. Then Jesus said to the Jews. Then who said? Oh, Jesus said. Jesus is saying this. To the Jews. Okay. Who had, who had believed in him. <clears throat> if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. If you continue in my word, you are truly my followers. Now, in the beginning of that, it says, Jesus said to the Jews, well, we all know the words that Jesus spoke wasn't just to the Jews. It was to the Gentiles and to everybody. So that includes us. Okay? So now he's speaking to us. And he's saying, if you keep my word, you will be my followers. Right. Read on. And you will know the truth. And you will know what? You will know the truth. And you will know the truth. If you read my word. Go ahead. And the truth will make you free. The truth will let you go out the door. <laughs> Are you all hearing me? Not what somebody said. The <coughs> truth. And the truth is in him. <clears throat> this ain't about what somebody tell you. You can't just live on what somebody tell you. <laughs> Are you all hearing me, family? Mm -hmm. And too many people are comfortable saying, that's enough. What do you mean that's enough? And you could be held back from great things because you settle for enough. The truth will set you free. The truth. We stay crippled. And there are people enabling the crippled. <laughs> and they enable you by only telling you what they know. And they have only gone so far. And a lot of people only can take you where they've been. You can't go beyond that. And since they don't want to go beyond that, you stay there. You stay right where they are. Serious thing, family. Crippled. Because we're not motivated enough to do what the Bible says. The Bible says, take my yoke Yoke up with me upon you. Because my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He says, learn of me. Learn of me. Learn of me. I want to use as a case study for this series... Jesus take the wheel. And the scripture is going to be taken from Acts chapter 8. Let's turn there. And I'm going to read a few verses, starting at the 26th verse. It's a serious thing. Acts chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 26. 
as for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kandike, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet of Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk alongside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I understand unless someone instructs me? And he then, he then urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. I'm going to stop there at that verse. How can I understand unless someone <laughs> instructs me. The few verses that we're going to study next week just doesn't show us that the Holy Spirit wants to lead, but it also shows us how he wants to lead. Now, the book of Acts... <coughs> It's called Acts of the Apostles. It is the Acts of the Holy Spirit working through the Apostles. And the book is written by a man named Luke. He's not a historian, but he's a physician, a doctor. It is interesting how God doesn't use a theologian, but a physician, to write the gospel of not only Luke, but also the book of Acts. It shows that God will use everything and anything. He will also use things that we may think are irrelevant. You see, you can't be a physician without being good with details. Without being investigative, patient, meticulous. Could it be that God uses this aspect of Luke's life to be an asset to the kingdom? And this detailed nature of his is revealed in this book, Acts. Now, Pastor, what does Luke have to do with me and you? Well, he got a lot to do with me and you. Because I'm sure there have been seasons in your lives and in our lives where we were involved in things that we did at that time that we didn't think was really important. But we did it anyhow. <coughs> some of us did some things just to fill up a space for a time being. Maybe we got some degrees in college that we're not even using now. And they seem irrelevant to us now. But God is a good God and he's a good steward. And he wastes nothing. That's right. He will use everything and take what we may think sometimes are irrelevant irritants and he will make them an asset in his time. Amen? Amen? There may have been some bad seasons, some complex seasons, confusing seasons. But there are no wasted seasons. God can and will redeem what you feel like is irrelevant. 
You know, I ponder that sometimes because I look back at my life and some of the bad choices that I made, and I was out there for many years. But you know, a lot of the things that I experienced <laughs> were learning lessons. Because in my life now, I use them all. Isn't that something? At that time, I, it was like I was just destroying myself. And he still will use that in spite of me. I pull on those moments. I help people from experiences that I had. Bad experiences. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But when I see someone going down the road, I say, oh, I've been there, done that. Brother, sit down. Let me talk to you. Let me tell you what you're about to get into. Now, I had to suffer it for you. But I could use it to help you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? That is why I feel like older gentlemen and older women need to be there to talk some sense into these young girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously, you all got the wisdom. Mentor some of these young boys who don't want to pull up their pants. <laughs> Seriously. These girls who want party, party, party. You need to let them know this thing that's wear on your body, this has come back to bite you. Putting all kind of stuff in you. Two, three, four o'clock. Ten, fifteen, sixteen partners. Then you suddenly in your thirties you're ready, you want to settle down. You find a man who wants to be good to you, and your body can't carry a baby. Are you all hearing me? This is a serious thing. You don't destroy it. But some of us who've been out there, been through some really bad times, can sit them down and say, look, you're going the wrong way. This could hurt you. And this stuff comes back to bite you. Hard. Are you all hearing me, family? It's a serious thing. God can redeem what feels like irrelevant. He uses everything. You may not be using that degree at the moment. But I can tell you one thing. You're using what the degree taught you. You're using the character trait of resilience. Because many times, when you hang it out in school, you learn that big time. Amen? Amen. That degree taught you something. So Luke writes here in Acts 8 about this incident about a gentleman named Philip and his exchange with this Ethiopian eunuch. Philip has just finished ministry in Samaria, and God leads him down south from Jerusalem to Gaza. This story is going to teach us how the Holy Spirit, because we just read the Holy Spirit said, go that way. When we don't let Jesus take the wheel and guide us, we lose big are you all hearing me? We lose big. <clears throat> because when we don't let the Holy Spirit and, and being obedient guide us, lead us, we miss life-changing stuff. And we can see that with this story. Had he been disobedient and not go, he met this man and what's important, the man was open to hear how he could teach him and understand some things. But that wasn't the big thing. God is so big. Do you all know who that man was? Did y'all read who that man was? Read it. Eunuch. Huh? Well, oh, he was more than a eunuch. Listen. I think the eunuch served in the king's court or something or... He was the treasurer to the queen. <laughs>
times when you don't listen to God, your path don't cross the person who he put in your way for you. Huh? Someone you would never have met <laughs> had you been disobedient and not gone. Now many of us will say, wait a minute, I could go this way and it'll be shorter. Why do I God won't send me? <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Be ready to question immediately. Why? Because we always got to be in control. And we ain't in control. Are y'all hearing me? We always need this explanation. <coughs> Why? Well, there's a better route over there. And, and then we live in this nuking it generation. Everything quick, 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 fast and hurry. And anything we're saying to be going, going slow, we done mad. Mm. I know somebody who went away this week. And they were going away. And they jumped. They sit down on the couch and start going up their phone, because you can go on the phone and somehow you can pre-check and don't go through TSA something, something. And you can bypass. Y'all know who's traveling. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? You ain't got to get on that line where this look like a, a snake. <laughs> and there's another line over there. And you see them people, they didn't pre-whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Because they ain't got the patience. The second they look at that line, their blood pressure goes sky high. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> but sometimes, when God say, go that route, he got a plan. Amen? He has a plan. So we're going to talk about that a little bit next week with this story. You all can go home and read about it. Read chapter 8 and see how the Holy Spirit leads and teaches us how to follow. Amen? Amen? Put your hands together and let's give God some praise. We need to understand that God is sovereign. I remember I did a sermon on the sovereignty of God. Family, don't let the enemy fool you. Excuse me. We ain't in control. Excuse me. We are not in control. You can carry on all you like. God is in control. And the sooner we learn that, the better for us. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Let Jesus take the wheel. Let him lead. Because when we don't, we miss life changing stuff. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please come back next week. And let's go through this so we can learn how to let the Holy Spirit lead us. That is the best way for us. Thank you so much for coming. You are dismissed.